Donna Kelly, and this is Hudson Valley Art Speak. Thanks for watching today. And um, I'm going to be interviewing Ann Gadeski today. Ann is an artist who uh, lives in the Hudson Valley. She's a painter and a photographer, and um, she taught for years at Pauling High School. And um, welcome, Ann. Thank you, Lana. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, this is very exciting. Thanks for coming, <laughs> Ann. <laughs> So recently you, um, you know, we can say retired, but it's kind of like you just took a change of, of lifestyle and, and you're not teaching anymore, but you're more involved with your painting and producing work now? Exactly. I refuse to say the word retired. <laughs> I think it's just a transition and I, to become a full-time artist. And when people say, well, what do you do? I don't say retired. I say I'm an artist. Mm -hmm. and uh, they look at me sometimes a little peculiar, in a peculiar way, um, and can, like, can you make a living at that? And the answer is probably not. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, fortunately, um, you know, it's not my primary source of income. So uh, it is a gift to have time mm -hmm. now to pursue different things and different ways of doing the same thing. Yeah, we had talked one time, um, you were putting some work into a show at Front Street Gallery in Patterson, mm -hmm. and uh, the idea was to show two works that, that were um, opposites or, or, or showed different aspects of things. And um, when I met you one day, you said you were having a hard time figuring things out because it was just so different from what you usually did as a teacher quite a bit more esoteric than trying to teach a specific drawing technique, which frequently you are when you are doing instruction. Not that you're not trying to stimulate creativity at the same time, but um, for a long time I was the person who was giving the assignment, not necessarily executing the assignment, and I was critiquing and evaluating it. Now when you take a step back and you are working through the, that kind of process on your own, uh, I think you second guess a little bit what maybe when you were younger came a little bit natural, more naturally and a bit more easily, I think. Uh, I tended to overthink uh -huh. <laughs> what was going on. And um, I think as a younger artist and one who was just starting out for the first time, you have less of those constraints. Um, and perhaps you've listened to less criticism, so you're more willing to take a risk. Mm -hmm. uh, I brought those two pieces with me today that were the result of that um, objective, uh -huh. and they're on the wall behind me. And I called them in and out of context because they seem to show the um, that uh, differentiation or that um, idea that the show was, you know, trying to uh, display. So the inspiration for these came from Estes Park in Colorado. And I had been taking pictures of beautiful vistas and lots of landscape and mountains and rivers and it was just beautiful and happened upon in Estes Park this wildflower garden. Uh -huh. Studied, you took a, a number of pictures and I, you know, you said very nicely that I was a photographer in the beginning, but I just take pictures yeah. a lot and um, choose the ones that I think uh, can be adapted to a specific art form. So I did the first one was the actually the larger poppy, and it took me weeks to do it uh -huh. in trying in the traditional way to you know glaze and yeah. brush work and all that kind of thing. The bottom one I did in a day. <laughs> the bottom one is, is a lot looser, it seems. Well, it is, and you know, a lot less studied and architectural in nature, less graphic uh -huh. in, in a sense. And I do have some experience in graphics, having taught Photoshop and things like that for many years. So I guess I, I tend to be comfortable with geometric, graphical representation, that kind of thing. Uh -huh. And this was a challenge, but, and also doing it a la prima where everything's wet, because this is oil paint, so. Right. You're trying to control that as well, so. Right, so so with the two of these, what was, the, the concept was the differenti the, the difference. Mm -hmm. So what, what did you, what was the difference? Well, 
Um, I think just the difference in, in attempting a diff another technique was really huge for me to try and do something al prima, <clears throat> excuse me, where you didn't have everything under complete control. So you kind of had to let the paint take you where it was going to go rather than the other way around. Mm -hmm. And the other was to um, select from, you know, a chaotic environment, mm -hmm. a specific um, piece to study. And actually, when you look at these, this poppy up here is this one in the painting. It's right in the painting, yeah. yeah. So um, I like what you said, you have to follow where the paint takes you. Um, you mentioned before when we were talking that uh, you are trying to do more experimentation and be, I guess, a little bit looser. Um, so how is that? Well, I think with um, pre previously when I was painting, I was usually um, under a deadline and was getting ready for a show. So everything had to come out right, you know, the way you wanted it. Now, with additional time and the lux that luxury, you can give yourself a little bit more permission to fail. Uh -huh. If something is not right, you're like, okay, well, I learned this from that experience and I can apply it to what I'm going to do next. Uh -huh. uh, and I think that's really valuable. The time um, component has made a huge difference for me. Yeah. Yeah. So you're getting ready for a show right now, aren't you? Yes, I am. Um, Every two years, I've been fortunate to um, be an exhibitor at McKinney and Doyle uh, in Pauling, New York. Uh, Shannon McKinney, who is the owner of the um, business, uh, encourages local artists to show in his space. And he has a lovely dining room with these great um, brick walls and uh -huh. shows off your art really beautifully. And so my uh, exhibit starts May 6th. And it will go on until August 5th. Mm -hmm. So um, if anybody would like to, it's at, on Charles Coleman Boulevard in Pauling. Yeah. <laughs> and come to the restaurant besides. Oh, the restaurant's such a hot restaurant. <laughs> it it's is always so, mob. Oh, it's cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and besides that, you do the Artist Open Studio Tour. Yes, I do. And um, I found it much more relaxing to do it this year than in previous years because I was trying to jam the preparation in, you know, before the weekend. Yeah. And now it was a little bit easier. And I enjoyed actually the entire uh, event mm -hmm. even more. Yeah. Because yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah. So um, if people wanted to see your work, I, I know you don't have a website right now, but you do have a page on arteastduchess.com, don't you? That's that correct. Website? I do. And um, I will be posting my newest pieces there um, as soon as my event begins mm -hmm. and everything is totally ready to go. Um, that's another thing that is I think artists don't take into consideration enough is how well they photograph their work when it's completed. It's very true. It's very yeah. difficult. It's yeah. not that easy. I mean, yeah. I, I was fortunate. I photographed student work for years because I taught a college level class and their portfolios had to be uh -huh. submitted. So. I had learned different things, but um, it's still tricky, especially when things have yeah. a shine on them mm -hmm. or the lighting is very important. So, well, I tell you, I get uh, we get JPEGs for the artist website that you just wouldn't believe. <laughs> 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 you know, people take them with a you know um, whatever little digital camera that they have, and they. Uh, you get a, you get a yeah. lot of flashback from mm -hmm, that, and mm -hmm. and you know if you're going to use artificial lighting, you have to have you know the correct equipment really in right. order to do it effectively. Right. So maybe we should hang out a shingle for that. Maybe we should have a class in <laughs> that. Maybe uh, we be should before we have the open studio tour and have people bring their work and and, and set it up and with studio lights. That would be a great idea. Yeah. Also, just a suggestion for anybody who's watching who is an artist and they want to photograph their work. Um, go outside and hang it on the north side of your house. Yeah. And yeah. E during the, you know, the day, um, you get the least amount of glare. Actually, some of my best yeah. um, results have been 
photographing it outside. I, I've done that also, um, taken work. I have one side of my house where I have a nail, <laughs> and uh -huh. I hang work on that, and the light is nice and even. It's uh, open shade, mm -hmm. so you know there's not a lot of sunlight. You don't have to worry about mm -hmm. the light bouncing off the paintings. I think one of the other things that I'm always concerned about as an artist, and I've heard other artists speak about this, is the level of toxicity of the materials that they're working yes, with. Yes, yeah. And I have found that since going back to oil painting, because I didn't do it for many years because of the, the um, fumes right, from yeah. turpentine mm -hmm. and everything. But now I've found materials and ways to clean up without using things that are toxic and um, in order to you know, preserve my own health sure. and, and keep up my interest in what I really like to do the best. Yeah. So. Nancy Clark, who was uh, here for an interview, also told me that she has started working in water-based oils mm -hmm. and that they don't have the toxicity as, as, as uh, the oil oil-based oils? Well, the, ter the it's the solvents mostly uh -huh. that are the problem. And also some of the, um, the, the pigment is, can be toxic, uh -huh. like cobalt and cadmium and things like that, that if you're using a, an artist grade paint, you're going to encounter. Student grade, um, which has the word hue next to it, that's made in a lab. It's uh -huh. not you know, quite as toxic. Really? Yeah. But uh, the cleanup and the, you know, thinning and things like that, you have to be careful of what you're going to use. Yeah. So, um, I hope everybody will get to see a show at McKinney and Doyle. And, I hope and, so too. Um, also to come to the Art East Open Studio Tour. We're coming to the end of our time. Uh, uh, well, so. uh, we have new dates for the Art East Tour this year, right? The 19th? of October. You know, people have to go to the website. Yeah. I always forget the dates. <laughs> so I know, but I we're like the weekend before this year, the yeah, earlier weekend, yeah. I noticed that. So I hope people will come to that. Yeah, I think they will. Um, I'm looking forward to it myself, to uh, getting all the promotion and getting all the work started on it. Mm -hmm. And um, Anne's work can also can be seen on the Artie's Duchess website. And um, I look forward to seeing your new work at McKinney and Doyle. And, uh, and, and uh, for the website. Thanks very well much, Well photographed Lana. work. You're well <laughs> photographed. My well photographed work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming today, Anne. Thank you very much, Lana. You're welcome.